Reading The Slayer, Buffy didn't have a lot of time to read, but we are gonna pretend that she did. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be reading Like Buffy Summers, aka Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love Buffy. I have grown up with Buffy. I will get more into that in a second. But before we actually get into the video, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor because we've done a bit of a, a themed intro to the sponsorship for this video. <laughs> oh! That's right, the sponsor is Book of the Month. I managed to wrestle the amazing blue box off of a vampire. <laughs> So many of you probably know, but Book of the Month is this super popular online service for book readers, which honestly, I still can't believe I'm working with them. It's kind of been my ultimate YouTube goal. <laughs> book of the Month really prioritise promoting new and emerging authors, and they research hundreds and hundreds of books each month to whittle it down to this perfectly curated five book selection, which you can pick to receive as your book of the month. And if you don't fancy any of the books that month, no problem. They have a skip policy, so you can skip months if none of those particular books interest you. Now, I do want to point out that book of the month currently only ship in the US. They don't currently ship to the UK or internationally. Some of you asked how I was able to receive it. It's because we're working together in the sponsorship. They're able to send me um, the books, but they don't currently ship internationally for everyone. But if you are in the US, book of the month have the best price for new release hardcover fiction and you can get your first book for only $9.99 $9.99 with the code MegWithBooks. We have our own code ladies and gentlemen, MegWithBooks. Use the code MegWithBooks to get uh, your first book for $9.99. So let me show you what the book choices for October are. We've got my favourite of the month, Everything We Didn't Say, which is a thriller where a woman returns to her small hometown to solve a murder that her family are twisted up in. And it also has, I think, true crime podcast elements, which we know I absolutely adore. Next, we have The Lincoln Highway. This is by the author of A Gentleman in Moscow. This is set in the 1950s. Our protagonist has recently been released from prison for involuntary manslaughter and decides to hit the road with two friends and his younger brother. Then we have The X Hex. This is a super Super fun and quirky romance about a town being put in danger when a major post breakup hex goes wrong. Then we have Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, a really famous and successful author. This is a historical literary fiction which follows a heist in Harlem in the 1960s. And then finally we have The Perishing, which is a little bit of speculative fiction. This is set in 1930s LA. A young black woman wakes up in an alley with no memory of who she is and a series of events lead her to suspect she may in fact be immortal. So this is a great selection of books. I really feel like there's something for everyone here. And also I want to chat to you about the add-ons with Book of the Month. So not only can you get one of these bad boys. Add-ons are books you can add on to your monthly box. You can add up to two extra books. Two of the ones that I think are most exciting are Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. I've always wanted to try some Leanne Moriarty, but I've actually never read anything by her. And also The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is the long-awaited sequel to Practical Magic. So yeah, make sure you go check out Book of the Month down below and make sure you use the code MEGWITHBOOKS for your first book for $9.99. Okay, so let's talk about this video now. Buffy Summers, an icon, a legend. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. But I thought she would have read more in the seven series that the show was on, I'm not gonna lie. I did my research, I like watched those episodes, I went and I looked it up online and my spooky gal ain't read a lot of spooky books, which is what I was hoping for. She ain't read anything, she didn't have time. She was too busy killing vampires. She had no time to read, basically. So I present to you my research that I have done. In 
Band Candy. Season 3, Episode 6. When faced with the prospect of selling the band candy, Buffy compares herself to fictional character Willie Loman from the play Death of a Salesman. I have not read a play in a long time, but it kind of has like a nostalgic feeling for me because obviously at GCSE at school, in English you'd read a lot of plays and then I did drama for A level and we'd read loads of plays for that and I actually really enjoy reading plays. So I'm going to read Death of a Salesman. I literally don't know anything about this play. I could not tell you the plot. A lot of you are probably sitting there screaming at your screens, but I know nothing about the play, but we're going to read it. Okay, we're gonna read it. Then during season five, there's an episode called Buffy vs. Dracula. I knew I wanted to read a vampire book for this video. I feel like it's only fitting, but I've read Dracula and I hated it. <laughs> because it's shit! So instead for this, I am gonna be reading Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the second book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I didn't love the first, in the series, but I love the vibes. I love the potential of this series, but I remember the writing wasn't quite my vibes. And I think in this one, Audrey Rose has traveled to Romania to study and people are saying that Prince Dracula is alive and revived and is killing people essentially. That was kind of the two references to any kind of you know literature I could find Buffy reading. So then the last book, for a third book, I was thinking, well, what would she actually read? Like what, if I had to imagine what Buffy would actually read, what would it be? And I think she would love romance. She's a bit of a romantic at heart and I feel like she'd like to read normal people doing normal things and having a normal romance. In the show she's always craving a normal life and, and a romance. <laughs> she's always in romances so I thought I should definitely read romance and the one I have chosen is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. It's about these two scientists, one who's a PhD student and the guy is a professor at um, the school and it's their romance basically and I've heard really really good things about this. I'm looking forward to reading a bit of fun light-hearted romance so that is the third book we're going to be reading. So we have got these two plus Death of a Salesman and I'm super excited. My whole camera literally just fell on the floor. The tripod just fell. I'm hoping we're still alive. I'm hoping the camera's okay. <laughs> it looks okay. Okay so turns out <laughs> that although my camera didn't break my microphone did lo and behold. So in the next like two clips the audio quality isn't as good because it's just my camera's microphone. After that I realised and bought my microphone again and then the audio quality gets back to normal. So like for the next two clips it's bad audio but then it gets okay again basically. <laughs> I'm gonna start Death of a Salesman. I have got the ebook on my very old iPad. <laughs> oh she's so real. And again I literally do not know what to expect. I I have no idea what the plot of this play is, but I'm excited to give it a read. So let's go read. I'll go read Act 1, then we'll chat about it, then I'll go read Act 2. I'm halfway through Death of a Salesman. Uh, it's fucking boring. It's fucking boring. <laughs> Bored shitless! I'm hearing the same conversation over and over and over again! The one saving grace is I'm enjoying reading, like, a theatre script again. I'm enjoying reading, like, with stage directions and just it's taking me back to when I did Drama A Level and how much I loved it and how much I enjoyed acting and seeing plays, going to plays. Like I haven't been to a play for so long and I used to go to a lot and it's taking me back to that element of it. That's the only good thing. <laughs> it's basically following this guy, this old guy, and we're following him, his wife and his two adult sons and he is starting to kind of get easily confused between what is reality and what is not. He's kind of blending realities between the past and now and he's got very fractured relationships with one of his sons in particular because of it. He doesn't appreciate his wife. It's just boring. Listen, I don't like the kind of plays, and I used to have this problem back when I used to like read a lot of plays, watch a lot of plays, where it's like, it happens in 24 hours in one room. Like, I don't like it. I really, I don't like it. Just give me a bit, a bit of spice. Add a little bit of spice. Like, why have we always got to have all these plays that, are, I mean, I know, I, I know it's good for like set dressing and everything, like we can just stay in the same place, 
but it's boring. The thing is, it's very different to a book, isn't it? Because even a novella, it's different even to if a novella happened in one room with the characters that we only met for like a hundred pages, because I feel like we would know more about inner motivations. With plays, there's no like descriptions or what the characters were thinking, and you kind of have to like figure it out for yourself, and I don't like that. Just serve it all up to me on a platter, please. But poor Buffy Summers, I can understand why she didn't really like school because reading this shit I have better things to do with my time <laughs> okay, I finished Death of a Salesman and I don't even want to talk to you about it. I was bored as fuck. I was bored as hell. <laughs> what a miserable reading experience. Plot twist, it was not allergies, turns out depression. It's like I know in a way that the author has done what they intended to do because it's just like miserable. <laughs> it's like misery about life and time and work and one's relationship with the relentless pursuit of work. So I know the author did something well but fuck me I did not enjoy reading that at all. The ending made me a little bit emotional but that was it. The rest of the time I was just pushing myself through this so I'm gonna give it two stars. Two stars because the ending I felt was poignant but oh, fuck I, just, I, I literally have no words. Right now life couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I literally have no words. Listen, I understand it's a classic, it's a tragedy. It's not supposed to be fun and game, but that it was like torture. <laughs> and the thing is I'm already a little bit sad this week. I'm already a bit down in myself. And so just reading sad shit, I'm just not in the mood to do that. And so it was really hard and I don't even want to talk to you about it because I don't want to talk about sad things. <laughs> I just thought it was boring. Like it's literally just characters standing around talking. Nothing happens. That is not how I like my theater. I I mean, here's the thing, I do appreciate more character focused theatre sometimes. Like, it doesn't have to be fucking like Les Mis, we're all singing and dancing, shit's going off. But it has to be interesting, and this was not. So, I mean, that's what I'm not talking about any longer. I'm sorry, Buffy Summers, that you had to, you know, sit through this and study this, probably. I'm sorry, Miss Buffy. I feel your pain. I cannot imagine how. Oh, oh my god. god, I cannot imagine how terrible it would have to be to do this at school, like to analyse this in depth. So I'm going to go ahead and start hunting Prince Dracula. Hopefully this is going to be a bit more of like a fun, easy read. All I know is that Audrey and Thomas are back on another adventure together and I'm hoping it's going to be like spooky and gothic and all of those things. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read this now. Already, like over halfway through Hunting Prince Dracula. I have kind of been flying through this, I'm not gonna lie to you. So in this, it, it, explaining the plot for this could be mild spoilers for book one, but I really don't think it is because I'm not gonna tell you what the actual mystery, like resolution was in book one. You know that Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell are gonna be off on different adventures throughout every book in the series. I know that about books three and four. I ain't read them, but like, you know that. So basically, Audrey and Thomas have gone to Romania to study at this uh, really prestigious school in Romania that is held in um, Vlad the Impalers, aka Dracula, um, his old castle. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you, is it a coincidence? There's this kind of rumour that Dracula's back and people are going missing and people are dying and the girlies want to try and figure it out. I'm really enjoying the atmosphere in this. I think this, these books, this series relies on its atmosphere. It does have a good vibe. It does have a vibe that the girlies eat up. It's got this like snowy, atmospheric, spooky, haunting, old castle aesthetic. It's a Pinterest board of a book. That's what these books are. That's why people love them. They are Pinterest boards of a book and the relationship between Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell is everyone's old Tumblr fanfic relationship that we all fucking fall for. Did I lie? Did I lie? Did I fucking lie? 
here's the thing. I don't love the writing, the writing style. The writing style does throw me off a bit because it is first person from Audrey Rose and she's just like, this girl, she, she is going through some stuff, but like being in her head <laughs> and her inner monologue all the time is a bit exhausting. It reminds me a little bit to a lesser degree, but it reminds me a little bit of Midnight Sun and being in Edward's head all the time. Like I'm like, girly, like, we're on the same thought track every 20 pages. It's just repeating. I, I don't know if I've ever been the biggest fan of the relationship between Audrey Rose and Thomas. I feel like I'm starting to warm to it, but I do find him kind of annoying. Booktube loves him. Everyone who reads this book loves Thomas Cresswell. He is like one of the OG guys that everyone loves. I just don't feel it. But I do think this one is better than the first, I think, right now for me. I've, I'm just flying through it. It's a very easy read. I think we've got a lot more interesting side characters in this one. There's a lot of interesting characters at the castle, at the school, particularly some girls, which I wasn't expecting. <laughs> I thought it was all gonna be guys. But there's some girl characters who I'm really enjoying and have got some interesting dimensions to them. And I'm like, oh, but I'm not loving it. But it's good. It's good. Listen, I'm starting to understand the booktube's obsession with this. Why booktube is on a chokehold for this book. A little bit more. Not that I will be that for myself, but I'm starting to understand it a bit more. Hello, hello. I have finished hunting Prince Dracula, finally. Actually, before we talk about that, I want to talk about this show that me and Tom went to last night. It was a drag show called Death Drop. And it's like this murder mystery show kind of, and then there were none inspired. And it was so much fun. I like, I haven't been out out like that in a long time and I'm going out the weekend. So like, what is my life? <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of like British kings and queens in the show, but two drag race queens were in it, Willem and Raja O'Hara. And it was just so much fun. It was so silly and campy and stupid. Anyway, Hunting Prince Dracula. I have mixed feelings about this because I think it's better than Stalking Jack the Ripper, but I gave that a three stars. And I think I'm gonna give this a three stars. I was leaning almost towards a 3.5, but I think I'm gonna give it a three. It's like somewhere between a three and a 3.5 basically. Maybe, okay, I'm gonna give it a 3.5, but I'm gonna round it down on Goodreads rather than round it up because it feels closer to a three, but it is kind of in between. I enjoyed this, like I flew through it. It was a fun book to read. I really enjoyed the experience of reading it kind of. But there's just nothing about it that sets me alight. There's nothing about it that makes me go, oh my god, that was so good. Oh my god, that was such a fun book to read. Oh my god, wow, you know? I just want to sit here on me over for a minute, gather my thoughts. It's a book that I'm glad I had the audiobook for, because if I didn't have the audiobook, I think it would have taken me fucking yonks to read it. At least I could read it like whilst I did my makeup and stuff like that, because I don't think it's the kind of book that I'd be super excited to pick up. I enjoy the romance, but also I've never really bought into it. Thomas Cresswell is not my flavour of man. I don't know why. I find him a bit smarmy, a bit like slimy. I know he's not supposed to be like that, but I find him a bit slimy. And I feel like it ended in a really fun way. The aesthetics were wonderful. But for me, I think the thing that prevents me from absolutely loving this is the writing style. There's something about the writing and me that just don't click. I do want to still try and finish this series. I know that's crazy. Like, I know people like Megan, you've given both of the books three stars, essentially, in this series. Just end it. And I'm like, no. I want to finish the series. I want to finish the series because I like finishing series. And this is the oldest series on my TBR that I'm still reading. So I wanna finish it, you guys. I wanna finish it. I don't know when I'm going to. It'll probably take me like another two years to read the next two books. I mean, it was okay. It was fine. It was an enjoyable read. You know, it's good for spooky season. So anyway, now I am going to read the last book, which is The Love Hypothesis by Andy Hazelwood. I just heard such wonderful things about this. I was watching um, Mara from Books Like Woes wrap up the other day, and she said this is her favourite romance of the year. That's high praise. That's high praise. So today I need to edit some more of this vlog. Um, I've kind of been editing it as I go along, but I need to edit some more of it and I need to read this. I need to fit, try and edit the video and read this whole book today. And it's already like 11, 12 o'clock, so. <laughs> I have got reading sprints with my patrons later, so I wanna make sure I'm reading in that. So I think I'm gonna edit for a bit and then read for a bit, edit for a bit, read for a bit. So that hopefully by the time the sprints come, that's at half seven, I want to have edited everything I've already filmed and hopefully maybe I've read a hundred pages. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. Okay, so I am 
95 pages into the love hypothesis and this is exactly what I needed right now this is exactly what I needed to read right now I am just flying through it I'm loving this it is brilliant American literature and I don't care what anybody it is it's lit it should be taught in schools so basically we're following a PhD student who ends up getting into the situation where she is fake dating the most feared professor in the faculty he's known for being like an asshole basically he's known for being strict horrible um, making students cry but they get into a situation where he agrees to fake date and their dynamic is so fun you know she's kind of this upbeat positive person and he is just deadpan kind of miserable but like only nice to her like I think I like this in books when the guy is like cold but is lovely to love interest I don't know why I just really like it and I did read Take a Hint Danny Brown which had fake dating and I didn't I think I'm enjoying this one a bit more. I feel like they both really are invested in it and really have something to gain in terms of their careers and the fact that they're kind of in the same workplace without having any kind of weird dynamics, like workplace dynamics with each other. It's affecting both of them in their shared workplace in different ways and it's really really interesting so I'm just loving it I really like how how it's starting off because they're still just obviously fake dating with Take a Hint Danny Brown which I read they both felt things for each other beforehand right but in this one there isn't that so I really am enjoying obviously seeing them going from not being interested in each other at all and then they're gonna fall in love. That's what I think I love in romances. So perhaps that's why I didn't love taking Danny Brown as much as I wanted to and as much as I thought I would and as much as I probably will love other Tally Hibbert stuff is because they both kind of like fancied each other at the start of the book. Whereas when I read romance, I want to see them fall for each other. I want to see that moment where they start to fall in love. And obviously you still had that in Take a Hint Danny Brown because it was more lust into love. But this one is like total non-interested in each other into love. I suppose at some point so um yeah I'm really enjoying it I can see why this is a romance that so many people have loved so I'm gonna read some more my live reading sprints my patrons start in just over an hour so I've got a bit more time to read and then I'll just read loads in the sprints and I'm hoping I'll get very close to finishing this book tonight hopefully okay guys gals and my non-binary pals we have got we've got a situation we find ourselves in but yesterday I went out with my family Family for the day and on the car ride there and the car ride back I read the whole of the love hypothesis I finished it I'm sorry I didn't want to check in with you like a hundred pages before the end but I didn't I will never forgive you and we have a situation we have this is a momentous occasion it's a big moment this is ah! <laughs> this is the first romance book ever that I'm giving five stars. I can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. I'm gagging. <gasps> Thank you, you I love it. I love it. And it gives me that buzz. I mean, can we just take a moment? Can we take a moment? I... Oh my god. Okay. I have just come down with a cold today and I feel like my dem demuted... No. <laughs> My reduced energy because of that is gonna like, I'm not gonna do this book justice, but fucking five stars, ladies and gentlemen. Everything about this is perfect. I love the science -y setting, these brainy bitches getting it on. I love the fake dating in this. Can we talk about grump, grump hero, sunshine, girly. I just, I just loved them. I think I do like books where they're not, listen, I'm not into books where the guy is mean, mean, like abusive mean, but if he's a bit grumpy and she is the one that he's not grumpy for, I mean, I live. I mean, I well and truly live. I loved this. Can we talk also, Book of the Month Excellence coming through. I just... Maybe I just need to trust them with everything. Maybe I just need to trust Book of the Month with my life. These sex scenes in this, whoo, whoo. I think maybe my favorite smart I've ever read in a book. Like genuinely, oh my God. And the conflict in this, the conflict at the end got me more than like any other romance conflict has got. Because 
I don't know, it just tore at my heartstrings and I felt sick and I felt on edge and I wanted to know how it all resolved. It was so good. And it was funny. Can we talk about how funny it was? This book is fucking hilarious. You know, some romance books, sorry, my face is itchy, don't mind me. Some romance books try to be funny and I don't think all of them pull it off, but this pulled it off and I just loved how they interacted. I loved the friends. I loved the kind of work pressures they were both under and how that tied into the story i just you guys this was so good my first ever romance book i'm giving five stars the growth that the characters went on throughout the book it had me i don't understand this is so good this is my favorite romance book i've ever read i loved it i loved their relationship amazing and i think buffy herself I think she would have fucking loved this. I think she would have eaten it up. What a great, what a great, what a great distraction from killing vampires this book would be. I can just imagine her sitting in her room and just loving this book. Oh my god. I just want to hit you all over the head with it. Five stars for a romance. Who am I? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? I loved reading Like My Girl Buffy Summers for a week. It was fun. I love Buffy. I had so much fun reading like this spooky gal for a video. So I hope you enjoyed it too. If you got to the end of the video, leave the vampire emoji. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you would have read if you read Like Buffy. I mean, kind of the first two were the only books she'd mentioned in the video but let me know what other books you think she would enjoy and have liked and thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon in another video love you lots bye